Hi everyone, and welcome to week 8 of Introduction to Causal Inference. In this week, we'll be covering instrumental variables. As usual, if you have any questions or comments throughout the course of the lecture, go ahead and leave those in the YouTube comments down below. As we've seen, if we don't have any unobserved confounding, we can easily identify causal effects. For example, we can do that with the backdoor adjustment. However, what if we have some unobserved confounder? So we depict that as u here with the dashed border around the variable to let you know that it's unobserved. And it's perfectly reasonable to think that we might have some unobserved confounding when we're doing observational studies, because we very well might not have access to some confounders. So we need to know what to do in that setting where we have unobserved confounding, and we've seen a few different techniques for what we can do. For example, in week 5, we saw that if we have the front door criterion satisfied, then we can use the front door adjustment. Similarly, we saw that we have identifiability if we have the unconfounded children criterion satisfied. The backdoor criterion and the front door criterion are special cases of the unconfounded children criterion, so it's more general. And this unconfounded children criterion isn't a necessary condition, so we can also get identifiability via some fancy application of the rules of due calculus. Since we saw that any identifiable causal estimate can be identified with a sequence of applications of the rules of due calculus. And that's all stuff we saw in week 5 for identifying a specific point for the causal effect. In week 7, we also saw set identification. So that's where we try to get an upper bound and a lower bound on some causal effect, giving us an interval that the causal effect must lie in rather than giving us a specific point that the causal effect must be. And then we also saw sensitivity analysis, which is where we try to quantify how different the true causal effect would be from our estimate, where we adjust for observed confounders, based on the postulated strength of the unobserved confounding. All right, so this is where we got those bias curves, depending on how strong the unobserved confounding is. And instrumental variables are another technique for addressing unobserved confounding. That's what we'll see in this lecture. This is the general structure to have in mind for an instrumental variable z here. The intuition is that z will cause some changes in t, which will then translate to some changes in y. And the hope is that we'll hopefully be able to identify some causal effect using that variation in t that's specific to z, that's you know not dependent on u. Here's the outline of this lecture. We'll first define what an instrument is. Then we'll emphasize that there is no non-parametric identification of the average treatment effect with instrumental variables. Then we'll warm up with showing some identification in a simple linear setting. But because it's a linear setting, it's not super satisfying. We might want more general identification where we don't have sort of linear parametric assumptions. So then we'll move to non-parametric identification, but it's not of the AT, it's of a different estimate, which is called the local ATE. And then finally, I'll point you to some settings where you can get identification of the average treatment effect, where you have more flexible assumptions than the sort of linear parametric form. All right, so let's move into the first section. What is an instrument? There are a few different assumptions that an instrumental variable or an instrument must satisfy in order to qualify as an instrument. The first is that z has a causal effect on t that corresponds to this edge circled in blue here. And this assumption is sometimes referred to as relevance. The instrument is relevant to the treatment here, in that it's a cause of the treatment. Then the second assumption that an instrumental variable must satisfy is the exclusion restriction. This is that the causal effect of the instrument z on y is fully mediated by the treatment t. Z doesn't satisfy the exclusion restriction in this graph because of this direct edge from Z to Y. It doesn't go through T. So to satisfy the exclusion restriction assumption, we must have a graph where that edge is removed. 
Recall that when we saw these probabilistic graphical models in week three, that we saw that removing edges corresponds to adding assumptions. Right here we're saying that we're restricting the data generating process so that we're excluding Z from the causal mechanism that generates Y. So this means that whenever we have variation in Z, it's going to go through T, the thing that we want to know the effect of on Y. If variation in Z were to go directly to Y, then we wouldn't be able to isolate the causal effect of T on Y using this Z. Then the third assumption for Z to be an instrument is what we'll call instrumental unconfoundedness. That means that the effect of Z on Y is unconfounded. In other words, there are no unblockable backdoor paths to Y. So in this graph, we see that we have a backdoor path from Z to Y, which is Z to U to Y. And because U is unobserved, we can't block that backdoor path. So we don't have instrumental unconfoundedness in this graph. We have to remove more edges to get instrumental unconfoundedness. So if we remove this Z to U edge, then we have instrumental unconfoundedness satisfied. Just like the assumption in the last slide, this assumption corresponds to removing an edge from the graph. And we could have a graph where there is a backdoor path from Z to Y, so here it's Z to W to Y, but because W is observed, we can block that backdoor path by conditioning on it. This gives us a slightly weaker version of the assumption 3, where we have unconfoundedness after conditioning on observed variables. And if we have this, we would call Z a conditional instrument. That concludes this section of the lecture and brings us to the following question. What are the three assumptions that we need to say that a given variable is an instrument, and what do they correspond to graphically?